Donald Trump went to a barber shop on Fox and Friends and it went really, 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 really poorly. The idea, I guess, again, in this idea of trying to unite and divide and who am I al allied with today? Trump went to a barber shop and was asked questions. He was asked, how will you fix Bronx schools? And Trump says by ending transgender operations that he seems to be saying are happening in school. We have here in the Bronx. What are they're, we going to failing? What are we going to do to improve that in our school systems? Well, we're moving them back from Washington, where you have people that don't care about New York, frankly. You know, in Washington, I don't know if you ever noticed us. You got Department of Education, Department of Education. You got half the buildings in Department of Education. <laughs> I never saw. You don't need any of them. You know, I want one person and a secretary to just make sure they're teaching English, mm -hmm. okay? Give it a little English, okay? I say reading, writing, and arithmetic. No transgender, no operations. You know, they take your kid. There are some places your boy leaves the school, comes back a girl, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Without parental consent. It is not happening. It is not. Trump is obsessed with this story. It is simply not happening. And you know that. And if you step back a moment, Trump's obsessed with genitalia over the weekend. He's going on and on about the size of the late golfer all Arnold Palmer's. <whistles> now he's talking about they are doing uh, a gender affirming surgeries at school while your kid is at school with no parental consent. It's all made up. Well, I guess I can't speak to Arnold Palmer's penis size, but I don't know that that's made up. But Trump is just obsessed with genitals these days. I don't know if it's because of something that's going on at home or what's going on, but it is all nonsense. Now, Trump gets a good question from uh, one of the gentlemen hanging out in the barber shop, which is how are we going to get artificial food banned in urban communities? Now, by artificial food, I think what what the gentleman means is ultra processed food. This is a major issue. You look at food deserts and the lack of availability of fresh produce and unprocessed foods, particularly in in lower income uh, parts of cities. This is a real issue. And Trump does one of his man, woman, camera TV moments, mentions Bobby Kennedy's name, doesn't give an answer because he doesn't have a clue. What is the plan to do about the fast uh, the food health care industry? And getting the artificial foods bans banned in our urban communities that have less access to organic whole foods. Great question. So, Bobby Kennedy, right? Everybody likes Bobby, you know, and he's so big into the health food and women things. Bobby Kennedy is really into women. Trump is right. What it has to do with ultra processed food in urban areas, I don't know. But yes, the reporting is extensive. Bobby is really into women. Everything he wants to do things in the environment. And he endorsed me first time a Kennedy's ever. He wants to do Bobby Kennedy, who loves women, is going to do things and the environment. He wants to do things. That's how we'll get it out of the schools, out, out of the urban areas. We're endorsed a Republican. Maybe it's going to be the last, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a great guy. He would be so perfect. He doesn't like artificial foods and he doesn't like pesticides and all the stuff they put on him. Okay. And if you listen to him for 10 minutes, I mean, he says other countries that don't do anything are healthier than us. Okay. We're not that healthy, Life to put it mildly. Uh, so no artificial foods. We don't want artificial. We have plenty of food. By the way, Trump eats McDonald's daily. He doesn't want ultra processed food. What are you talking about? The food isn't our problem and our farmers are great and our farmers aren't allowed to. Do there you go. Food isn't the problem and the farmers are great. So by, by the way, notice the confusion on the face of the guy who's like, what is Trump talking about? What is how does this even tangentially relate to Bobby Kennedy likes women? What? Trump's then asked, is it possible to eliminate federal taxes altogether? And Trump goes, absolutely. With all this extra revenue yeah. we're, we're going to be bringing into the country. So do you believe at some point in time we could find a way once the country's back on its feet and getting enough revenue and paid off our debt? Do you yeah. think it's possible to find a way to eliminate federal taxes? For Imagine the delusional nature of the question where it's like, listen, uh, uh, sir, once you become president and completely pay off our national debt, then can we get rid of the income tax? It's a fantasy world. It's a 
Once you pay off the national debt, can you get rid of an income tax altogether? There is a way. And, and, and how do you feel about You know, in the old days, when we were smart, when we were a smart country, in the 1890s and all, this, this is when the country was relatively the richest it ever was. It had all tariffs. It didn't have an income tax. Yes, sir. Okay? Now we have income taxes, and we have people that are dying. They're paying tax, and they don't have the money to pay the tax. No. In the old days, 1890, 1880, we had so much money, they had to set up committees, blue ribbon committees, how to spend our wealth. We had no idea how to spend it with so much money. Then we went to the income tax system and the rest is sort of history. But uh, no, there is a way. I mean, if we if what All right, I mean, he's talking about getting rid of the this is such a waste of time. And most of what Trump says there, as is often the case, there's like something he heard, which is a kernel of truth, but it's quite deceptive. It's true that in the late 19th century, there was such industrial growth and economic expansion. It was called the Gilded Age. There was this surge in wealth and industrial power, but it was also a time of a time of significant inequality. So it's conceivable that in relative terms, the country was as rich as it has ever been then, although it's not obvious to me, but it was not an economically healthy time because of the insane levels of inequality. There's sort of a subjectivity there. It is true that in 1890, the US government was primarily funded through tariffs and excise taxes. There was no federal income tax at the time, but tariffs are taxes on consumers and putting in place the taxation regime of excise and tariffs that there was in 1890. Now, instead of the federal income tax, uh, I, I honestly, I don't even know if it's been modeled. I'd be interested to see a model, but intuitively the country is so different now than it was in 1890 that to suggest that because we used to do something, we should do it again. It's sort of at the heart of conservatism. Hey, we used to do it this way. Let's go back to that. Well, why we should have a good reason. We're, we're not arguing to go back to transportation technology from 1890. We're not arguing to go back to healthcare technology from 1890. We're not arguing to go back to communication technology from 1890. If you say we should do it like they did in 1890, you really need to be able to demonstrate that it would be better. And of course, Trump never does. He goes, we used to do X. OK, we used to do lots of things. Don't want to do them again. So a failed barbershop uh, uh, event with Trump. And at every single event, the trends are clear. He's asked a question. He spits out words that don't really have anything to do with the question. And people in the audience are very confused. Can you become president when every single one of your events is that disastrous? That's the question we're going to answer November 5th. I hope that the answer is no. I wrote a book. This was so much work and a long time coming. But I am thrilled about how it turned out, and I hope you will read it. The book is called The Echo Machine. The 10 second summary is I explain how things broke in American politics, how to fix it, and which countries have already figured it out. No matter who wins in November, we need a plan, and that's what the book is about. If Trump wins, the book is a warning about how we got here and how to prevent it from getting worse. If Kamala Harris wins, the book explains what we do with this incredible opportunity to improve the lives of Americans. The book faces long odds, I will admit. There's the belief that to have a successful political book, you need corporate media and that it really can't be done successfully with an independent media platform like mine. But I believe that we can prove them wrong. I hope you will order the book today. You can get the echo machine at davidpackman.com slash echo on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Audible, Kindle, anywhere that books, ebooks and audio books are sold. You can also call any local bookstore. Ask them to order the Echo Machine by David Pakman. No matter where you get the book, you will get the free pre-order bonuses, including a signed book plate. After ordering, just go to davidpakman.com slash free book stuff, davidpakman.com slash free book stuff to get the free stuff. Let's do this.